great evening here for a moment of history. It's the talk of the town. We just have to be here. But I can't turn back now. This could be very special indeed. Everyone is buzzing for it. Now is a moment to deliver. Moments that can't be missed. Jeanette Wang has produced the moment of the day. The thrill of the battle. Ely has taken gold for the United States. Dreams can come true. One chance for glory and greatness. They're away first time. There's a massive roar from the crowd. So fast. Jeremy's done it. So determined. It is all gold here for Fred Jeremy. It doesn't get much bigger than this. Good evening and welcome to Eugene Hayward Field. This is our dedicated stream for the men's shot put competition. The final will be getting underway shortly. The athletes are down there warming up. All 12 of them, mountains down there, trying to launch the shot put as far as they can. We saw them on Friday morning. We didn't see this man for very long, the hometown favorite. These fans would have loved to see a little bit more of Ryan Krauser when they turned up on the opening session of these championships. But it was one and done, 22-28 for the man from Oregon just down the road. He was born here. No one knows this stadium better. Josh Owentunde came back from a good nine weeks out with injury to make this US team. He successfully navigated his way into this final with one throw just underneath the automatic qualifying mark. They were seeking 21 meters, 20, 21, 18. In the end, enough for Uruntunde to advance. And Ekwichi of Nigeria took two attempts. And just a notch short of that automatic qualifying mark. 21 meters, 20, but in the end, he's 20, 87 was enough. This man from Norway, Marcus Thompson, perhaps inspired by his team, teammate Henriksen's bronze medal in the men's hammer throw, got himself into this 12-man final. Just two attempts. Next up was New Zealand's Tom Walsh. Took him three tries to get over that automatic qualifying mark, so just finding his feet here in Hayward Field but securing his qualification in the end. Automatically 21 meters and 44. Adrian Pepperly won four Americans here. Thanks to Joe Kovacs being the defending champion from Doha. Pepperly, the NCA champion, taking advantage of four spots for his country and making it four men in the final. This man, the defending champion, Joe Kovacs, he only took one opportunity, one and done throw, as the throwers like to say, like to say as I've been hearing this week. That red bib indicating he is the reigning champion by the smallest of margins three years ago, just one centimetre. Nicky Ponzio of Italy took two attempts to get over the 21-20. He said he dumped on his first throw, just 21 metres and managed to get his act together at 21.33 to secure his spot in this evening's final. Filip Mihailovic of Croatia, well capable of 21.20 based on his personal best, but he struggled ever so slightly this year to hit his very best marks, but did enough to make it into the final, just a shade underneath the automatic qualifying mark. The second Kiwi man in the final will be Jacko Gill, two-time world junior champion. Took two attempts to secure his spot. And after that, he could head back to his accommodation, relax, and look forward to joining Tom Walsh in that final. Muso Munoz of Mexico. He had to do the full three throws, 20 meters and six, 20 meters and 24, 20 meters and 16. He kept throwing to ensure he could get into this final, but in the end, that second round throw was enough. Now this man, Darlan Romani, spoiled the party somewhat at the World Indoor Championships. Everyone is expecting Ryan Krauser to walk away with it. Romani stole that gold medal, finally getting himself off on the podium after so many top five finishes. But yesterday looked a little bit out of sorts. Not quite as smooth, smooth as you might expect, but there is our 12-man final. They work their way through these six rounds. And we'll get three throws, and then the top eight will get to throw in rounds four, five, and six. But Ryan Krauser there, throwing number five, really the favorite here. And it's up to everybody else to try and beat him, but they have so far at this World Championship stage. 
particularly Joe Kovacs. He's looking for his fifth consecutive medal. Tom Walsh, synonymous with shot put podiums, as is Dame Valerie Adams, the second Kiwi athlete that's really put them on the map in terms of heavy throws. See the graphic there in your left hand corner. Ryan Krauser is the indoor and outdoor world record holder. 23-13 there on your screens. But that championship record from Joe Kovacs, that was set in Doha. And he took that title by cute? one centimetre. No, hamstring. Lot of action going on there, down on the infield and on the outside of the track. Great to see lots of spectators here. Brilliant atmosphere for that 100 meter final yesterday. The USA taking one, two, and three. Could they dream about a one, two here? We saw them take gold and bronze in the women's hammer throw competition this morning. Brooke Anderson taking the win. Yane Kasanovoid picking up the bronze medal. But all eyes will be on these 12 men down there as they prepare to put on a show for this final. Lovely evening here in Eugene, Oregon. We've been treated to some fantastic weather. Tiny, tiny bit of cloud that was perfectly timed for the women's 10,000 meter final yesterday morning. But apart from that, it has been back to back sunshine. Nice and cool here though in the evening. Nick Ponzio talked about it being a little bit warm for his liking. Those medals just in front of this field, showing them really what they're aiming for this evening. So we'll introduce the whole field. First up will be Marcus Thompson, European junior champion from 2017, five-time Norwegian champion. I mentioned Ivan Henrik Henriksen picking up that bronze medal in the hammer throw. Marcus Thompson. Thompson doing super well to get himself into this final. So that world ranking 21st. He's outperformed that to get in this top 12. Nazil Munoz of Mexico. He threw a national record four weeks ago and snuck in as the last man to this final. Chukwabika and Ichi of Nigeria, national record holder, eighth last time out in Doha. Taking the crowd applause there. Chaka Gill, seventh in Doha, two time world junior champion. Progressing well to make another major championship final here. Adrian Pippery is the youngest in the field. He was fourth at USA. He's backing up his NCA win to make this championship team here at home. Philip Mihailovic picked up the bronze medal at the World Indoor Championships in 2018. He's having a decent season. He was second at the Rome Diamond League. Great to see him back up towards that personal best at 21.84. Here is the showman, the flamboyant Nick Ponzio. He's uh, constrained by the uniform rules here at the World Championships. Can't fully express himself um, in his clothing, so he's doing it with his attitude instead. Josh Owentunde was third at the USA's. Missed nine weeks in the middle of the season with a pep tear. Coming back to meet this team, fantastic comeback. World indoor champion from Brazil, Darlan Romani. Like he said, finally converting a string of fifth places into a gold medal in Belgrade. Can he crack the top three? Owned by the next three men on your screen, Tom Walsh. He's picked up so many medals. Could he make it another one here today? This man is the defending champion, Joe Kovacs. Hunting, listen to that roar from the crowd. He is hunting five consecutive medals in this event. And he's got stiff competition down there. Most of it could well come from his compatriot. The local man. The man this stadium are desperate to see throw. Wouldn't they love to see him pick up that gold medal and break his world championship curse here in front of a home crowd? It's quite the 12 person final, and I'm delighted to be joined this evening by yesterday's champion in the women's event, Chase Ely. Chase, 
how exciting was it to take your first world title on US soil in front of such a fantastic crowd and I'm sure lots of friends and family? Yeah, you know, having my family there and hearing the roar of the crowd from the second we walked in, it's been amazing and all the support I've had since it all happened, it's, it's just a dream come true. Have you had any sleep? Uh, not a lot. <laughs> so I'll be kicking Chase Ely under the table if she nods off. I'm sure the men down there will not be feeling sleepy at all. They will be filled with adrenaline. What a good start there from Philip Mihailovic. What could you make out there? Opening throw there for the Croatian, Mihailovic. Look good First to me. throw, always a lot of nerves, yeah. Um, he got over it very well. Um, I think he might build us a series here. He's looked great over in Europe, Filip Mihailovic. I've enjoyed watching a few of his competitions. Great second place uh, in the Rome Diamond League for him. Not bad. I guess, uh, Long road to go here. They're really just trying to get in that top eight, give themselves a full eight, six throws if they can get into that top eight. Right, this man, Nicky Tuchins, that's his name. He put it on his Instagram. I'm not calling him Nicky Tuchins. Nick Ponzio representing Italy. Like I said, he, he's got some flamboyant socks on. Okay, he snuck them past the officials. But he said, if I can't look funny, at least I can look handsome. Nick Ponzio in his first round effort here in the men's shot put final. So with speed there in the circle, around about the 21 meter mark. It's a uh, decent start there for Nick Ponzio. He opened his qualification with 21-20. Chase, what did you make of that? You know, I've trained with Nick for a long time. He's one of my best friends. Um, I think he's pulling off a little bit personally, um, but he builds series. He doesn't really start big as much, um, but I think we're going to see a lot more from him if he just stays on the ball. Can we make out what his socks say? Are you familiar with those socks? Um, stud, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Dud. <laughs> I won't even try and give Nick Ponzio a nickname. He gives himself <laughs> enough uh, plenty of material for a commentator. So pretty modest start there from Nick Ponzio. Won't challenge the early lead of Filip Mihailovic. 21 and 5 centimetres for the Croatian. Nick Ponzio, 20 metres and 28. And Nick Wichi of Nigeria is up next. Just over that 20 metre mark. He said, Chase, early nerves perhaps for some of these throwers. Yeah, definitely. Um, first throw is always really nervous. The crowd, the energy, it's just really scary. Um, obviously, my first throw went okay, but it is really scary to get out there. Um, I think we'll see some better throws in the later rounds for sure. Went okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were uh, nerves of steel to yeah. keep your composure through that final your winning mark coming in the first round. That must take the pressure off a little bit. Is that what you're hunting for when you go into a, a championship like this? You want to take the pressure off yourself. And Nick Wichi there, 20 metres and 15. Not quite taking the pressure off the Nigerian athlete, but how did it feel almost taking the pressure off yourself in that very first round? Yeah, you know, I went out there and I wanted to set the tone for the meet, and I think I really did, but it's, it's a hard thing to do for sure. Um, I really had to calm my nerves. You uh, set the tone for yourself, probably put the tone for everyone else. Might have been a little bit of pressure. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, nice for you. Be horrible for everybody else. <laughs> Jack O'Gill looked great in qualification. Brilliant to see someone move through the age group ranks. Two-time junior champion. It'd be fair to say, the likes of Jack O'Gill be in the shadows somewhat to Tom Walsh at the moment. Perhaps a young up-and-coming athlete, though, we could watch develop through the years. Still relatively young for a heavy thrower. He has one of the quickest releases, though, in the field, for sure. Yeah, which bit just there, you say, when he's coming yeah. over the board there. Mm -hmm. um, all the information they get from some of the technology that uh, both the New Zealand boys actually have uh, the fastest releases on the field. that shot look like it's a potato. 19 metres and 19 for Jacko Gills, a pretty modest start. Time for the big man. Keep your ear out for the crowd. 
<laughs> talk about pressure, talk about expectation. Ryan Krauser has waited a whole career for a world title indoor or out. Couldn't seal the deal in Belgrade. Had to make way for Darlin Romani. Ryan Krauser here in Eugene, Oregon. What can he do in his first round throw? Could be good enough for an early lead. Just over the 22 metre mark, Philip Mihailovic holding the lead at the moment at 20 metres and 5 centimetres. Chase, what do you make of our world outdoor record holder and his first throw? Um, from watching him in warm ups as well, I feel like he's um, trying to be a little safer on these throws, maybe build something. I'm seeing more of a static start um, than dynamic from him. So I think he's just trying to build here, maybe find the right time to go. I read something that said he did a static start at Prefontaine Diamond League, still took the win in <laughs> 23 yeah. and two centimeters. That's how good he is. He can uh, almost be kind of building training components. Um, but why would you start a competition with a static start? Would it just to find your feet? Yeah, I mean, sometimes um, you gauge it on how you're warming up, how you're feeling in the days coming. I know he's been throwing a lot um, in training leading into this. So I think maybe he must have seen something that wanted him, made him want to do that. Okay, next up in the circle. Uziel Munoz of Mexico. New national record four weeks ago. Can he trouble that? Probably not with that throw. That's going to be slightly over 20 metres, so about a metre short of his very best. He's carrying a yellow card. We've uh, seen a couple of yellow cards in the distance events. Ellie St. Pereira of the States picked up one in the round I think for stepping on the inside you can do that once if you do it again you're out but in terms of the power events we saw one for Le Mans Marcel Jacobs for being late to the call room and that's perhaps my only guess for the Mexican Munoz was that he was slightly late into the call room for his opening round A modest start there for Munoz 20 meters and one centimeter Adrian Piperdi very next, the United States. Apparently a fan of the cowboy hat, like Ryan Krauser. Not wearing it today, wearing a very business as usual. Sweat band, he liked that, he's, ra he's raising his arms to the crowd, he can't see it off picture. Chase, why is he so excited about that throw? That's a pretty good start for Tripp. Um, you know, coming off that ankle injury a bit ago and and I think um, not maybe having the furthest throws in qualifying. I think he probably feels really good about starting this world championship final right there. He looks really good. He's moving well. He looks super excited. He's got some strapping on his wrist. Is that more sort of functional? Give you that wrist stiffness for throwing. You mentioned ankle injury. That's, this event is so athletic. 20 meters and 88 centimeters of Pepperi in third place at the moment, but very early days in this men's shot put competition. Marcus Thompson up next, 24 years old, second youngest in the field behind Jacko Gill, New Zealand. Icelandic nation so strong in the heavy throws. This men's shot put competition is super international. Countries represented from all over the world. Marcus Thompson. Three Europeans in this competition. They've got their European Championships coming up in Munich. Three or four weeks away now in Germany. Thompson cutting his teeth here with the best seniors in the world. and 64. It's a decent start. Fourth place for the Norwegian. It's men just finding their feet out there in the circle. And this is our first look at the defending champion. Joe Kovacs is such a championship performer. We didn't see him indoors. Saved his very best for this outdoor season. So fast in the circle. Oh, and that is massive. Joe Kovacs pouring the pressure on. 
that has really sent a message out to the rest of the field. That is amazing. Um, I've been watching him warm up this whole time, and I've just been just moving around in my seat, waiting for this first throw. He looks amazing. Could Joe Kovacs be about to do what we call the Chase Ely and push himself up into gold medal position, give the rest of the field something to chase? It's bounced all the way out of the sector. Joe Kovacs like that, the home crowd like that. And he's done enough to push himself into the lead. 22 metres and 63 centimetres. Defending champion in pole position. So, Chase, you've been eagerly watching the warm-up. Well, we'll let Darlin Romani do his throw, but it'd be interesting. it's interesting that you could tell there was something big coming from Joe Kovacs just from his warm-up. I reckon we'll see something bigger soon. This is a world indoor champion. A moment to compose himself, and that's a decent opening effort there from Darlin Romani. He's not looked fantastic outdoors. He can take a lot out of an athlete doing an indoor season and doing it well. But Dylan Romani keeping himself out of trouble very much so far in this outdoor season. But made tough work of qualification yesterday. And it's good to see him coming out with a decent throw there, just a shade underneath 22 meters. That was a really good throw. He looks good. I think I've seen him strapped up a little bit um, during this outdoor season. Maybe his calf, I believe. Um, that might have a lot to do with it. But he doesn't seem taped up today, so maybe he's in form. You rip that tape off. Don't want to give you a competitor's any, <laughs> <laughs> any hint. There's a weakness. Darlene Romani, a big man from Brazil, strutting off. Pushing himself into the bronze medal position at the moment. 21 metres and 69 was fifth in Rio at the Home Olympics, fourth in 2021. I say that first global medal made it a gold. Josh Owentunde gets into the circle, just moving towards our final compet two competitors in this opening round. Owentunde starts low, finishes high. Oh, and that is a big throw from Josh Owentunde. Everybody's looking at Ryan Krauser, at Joe Kovacs, but you need to pay attention to this American. Josh Owentunde. What has he done there? Takes the hug from Ryan Krauser. I'm not sure it feels like a hug when you're that size, a bit of a crush. What do you make of that, Chase? That's definitely a PB that looks just how I saw him when he first threw over 22. He looked amazing, and um, this is over 22, so it's definitely a PB. Um, I'm really excited to see this mark right now. He, he's moving really well. I'm very excited. You are. You're on the edge of the seat. So here's the commentator's tip. It might come up on our computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly before Owen gets it. Sometimes it's afterwards. But he's smiling anyway. He knows that was good. Finding his groove here at Hayward Field. There They're clapping and he's cheering. 22-24 yeah. for Josh Owen Tunde. Look at that into second place, overtaking the world record holder, Ryan Krauser. Nothing One, like two, three. Worlds. Nothing like hitting a personal best at Worlds. Chase put it quite rightly. So he came in with a personal best of 22 meters, and he's added a quarter of a meter to it then. Tom Walsh, the veteran of men's shot put. His heart must have sunk ever so slightly at those massive throws. That's decent. That's a decent start there from Tom Walsh. He'll be so familiar with the pressure and the expectation in a major championship final. He definitely has a lot of experience. Um, I don't think I've seen a final without him in quite a few years. Um, he's also, again, another fast releaser. Um, I think we'll see some more out of there. He came off his feet a little quick, but I think he'll find himself. He's a veteran in this sport, so... Is that a slightly frustrated shrug, shrug there, shriggle? Yeah, he, it, wriggle? He, he, he definitely has all his his little movements he does. Is That was close <laughs> hands. Everyone knows that one. Well, here's your tip. That's what commentators love to see. <laughs> Tom Walsh can just, just help you out a little bit, you know. I don't need that today because I've got you to help me out instead. So that was the opening round of the men's shot put final. Joe Kovacs, the defending champion in the lead with 22 metres and 63. Josh Owen Tunde, the surprise of the first round, into the silver medal position. Ryan Krauser, the favourite in third. 
Filip Mihailovic of Croatia. Ooh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Perhaps finding his very best of the season. Ah, oh, and he's been given the red flag. Mm. Agonizing. Let's see if we can see the replay. You're typically going to find these fouls on the toe board, is what I'm guessing. Mm, he fell out. I didn't see all that. I was too excited looking at the mark. <laughs> but when you do a foul like that, so he's, he's, missed, he's lost his balance there? Yeah, and it, it's almost frustrating because you know you can hold that in, but your, your instinct is to watch your throw, which pulls your energy forward, when if you just kind of bring yourself back, you'll be fine. But it is those fouls are very frustrating. And would you take, you take confidence? from how far the shot did go, even yeah. though he fouled. Yeah. If he can just get there again, but keep himself in, he'll, he'll be in the running right here. Nicky Ponzio spoke very eloquently about the life of a professional shot putter. He's traveled all over the world, earning his money, having to put that time in, but all the while he was focused on Eugene and wanting to deliver a performance for Italy here. And that's okay. 20 meters and 28 in the first round in ninth place. Nick definitely has some of the best technique if you watch. His finish is where his biggest problem is right now. He's having a pause that I normally don't see, um, but technically he's usually very sound. What would that be? Maybe just a bit of nerves, a bit of kind of straining yeah. for it? I think, you know, you, you do good in qualifying and, and you feel a little bit of pressure, but. Um, if he just stays in himself and doesn't get in his head, he should be okay. So 20 meters and 81 for Italy's Nick Ponzio. Moves himself up into eighth place. And then Wichi of Nigeria. 20 meters and 15 in the first round. 21.80 at his best. Sean just landing obviously slightly in the shade there. And it's been a foul throw. And Iguichi's grimacing as he walks away. I hope that's because it's a foul rather than any sort of injury. I, th I think he uh, probably felt that that wasn't a good one. Knowing Chuck, you see it's flat. He, he, he probably knew it wasn't a good release from the beginning. The ankle doesn't feel good coming off the toe board, I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, a, it's quite a severe toe board down there. And Iguichi just having to settle for a foul next to his name in this second round. Jacko Gill down in 12th place at the moment. He's done 21.58 at his best. Put him all the way up in 5th place. Good having that personal best or that season's best on paper if you can't recreate it here at the World Championships. Good speed there, Chase Ely picking up for us that these Kiwi guys are so fast on their release and Jacko Gill demonstrating that there. That was a much better throw. He's he's staying on it pretty well. I just think I just think he's coming a little late off the left. Um, a lot of people will see how far over on the toe board he is. If he just gets a little, his feet down a little quicker and stays on the ball like that, he could definitely throw further. That speed of release is insane, though. <laughs> the numbers. Do they have sort of accelerometers? Do they put them in the in the shot put, or do they have cameras? That yeah, they have like a little machine that goes in the back and does our data. And like you said, the Kiwis have the fastest speed of release. It's insane. Every day is a school day when you're a 1500 meter runner. <laughs> To, uh, I used to think 1,500 meter tactics were complicated until I got myself embedded in some of these field events. Right, big man, Ryan Krauser. Indoor and outdoor world record holder. He knows he is capable of this title. He's under pressure already here. Third place after the opening round behind two teammates. What can Ryan Krauser bring here in the second round of the men's shot put final? Oh, that looks good. He's chasing the 22 meters and 63 of Joe Kovacs. Claps himself. He's saying it's close. What's he saying is close? The world record? 
Probably. I think it's well within his range right now. He brought the dynamic start here on this one, but it still looks a bit soft and easy for him and maybe not quite as hard on the finish as I normally see from him, but still an amazing throw. He is, it is beautiful to watch him as a thrower. It's lovely. It really is. Let's see what Mark Ryan Krauser is given. He likes it. It's just come up on our system. 22 meters, 71. New leader by eight centimeters. So, I mean, that's still not, we know he's capable of so much further. He's got that world record, 23 and 37. Will that have settled his nerves a little bit? Going back into the lead? Yeah, I think um, if you see yourself building, even just going up and up and up for every throw, that enough is to build confidence in you to make, to show you that you um, are headed in the right direction, good trajectory. Nose of Mexico up next to throw. Just right on that 20 meter mark. 21 meters and one centimeter, his first round throw. It's not going to be too much of an improvement. He's pulling off of it a bit, but um, I think in qualifications, it seemed like he was on the ball a little bit more. What do you mean by pulling off of it? Like at the finish, um, instead of really feeling the ball and pushing over the toe board, he's really coming around and pulling his head and his body away from the ball. And so the, the more time you have on the ball, the further it's going to go. Hear the noise going on in the stadium. It was the uh, heptathlon women's 800 meters and Anna Hall of the USA taking a victory there. The young athlete had quite the morning this morning. These male shot putters doing super well to maintain their focus. And so Munoz was 19 meters and 71. Pitpuri back in the level the circle. It might be a tiny bit better. Looking for an improvement on 20 meters and 88. Adrian Pipley. He's moving really well. He looks good. I think he's also going to keep building and just keep pushing on these throws and finding himself in this big final. Area junior record holder here as a senior. So great improvement there. 20 meters and 93 himself up into seventh place now for me chase as a commentator i'm looking to go you've got to get in that top eight you've got to get a final three throws how much does that play on the mind of competitors is that what you guys are thinking of when you're down there oh 100 percent that the first three throws and i feel like everyone's a little bit more on edge everyone wants to get that top eight really bad so marcus thompson of norway right on that bubble of trying to make this top eight. He's in 10th at the moment with 20 meters and 64. It's a tiny bit frustrated that. This is some good shot putting from him. I've, I've watched him a lot all season, even since indoors, and he's looking pretty good. He's a very consistent thrower. And if you can find that consistency, pilot competition on competition, you yield the rewards. But I said Ivan Henriksen, it's a great bronze in the hammer. He picked up silver at the Olympics. This time happened to yield the, to Pavel Fidek and Volchik Nowitzki. Norway, very much known for their strength, the Scandinavian nations. I love World's Strongest Man. That's one of my favorite things. That just, that just epitomizes Christmas yeah. for me. And the uh, Scandinavian nations, as, as are the North American nations. But uh, whenever I see these big uh, Scandinavian men throwing, I think of World's Strongest Man. Ryan Krauser, the leader, sits on. He looks relaxed. Surely he can't be. He's got to have memories of this man, Joe Kovac, stealing that gold medal from him in Doha. <sighs> That's not going to do it there. 22 meters and 63 in the opening round for Joe Kovacs. He's been given a foul as well, so that won't improve. He's looking for just eight centimeters to close down Ryan Krauser. I'm not sure if that was a purposeful foul, but watching him warm up, 
yeah, he stepped on the toe board, I would step out of that. Watching him warm up, I think he's got something big in there. He just needs to stay calm and stay relaxed and remember what he did in warm ups. It's so hard sometimes to bring yourself back, you know. Um, you have the big throw in warm ups, and then to just bring yourself back down and try and control yourself for the final is it's a lot harder. Darlin Romani, world indoor champion. His eyes popping out. I love the focus and the emotion you can see on the face of Darlin Romani. Raw as he released that shot. Right on the 22 meter mark, so that might improve his 21 meters and 69. Doesn't look like he can get back to Josh Owen Tunde's 22 meters and 24 in his second round. Chase, you talked about when you're doing something in warm-up, is it to do with the adrenaline? You, as the competition unwinds as well, your timing's going to change, and you've got to try to make those adjustments as you move through the competition. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with that. You know, nerves hit too. Um, um, I was warming up, I was really feeling it yesterday, and then those nerves hit, and you can feel them in your knees, which isn't where you want to feel them when you're trying to throw a shot put far, but I think if you can get your head, you can get your nerves, you can own a final. Yeah, being in the mind of a world championship competitor, it's a, it can be a good place, it can be a scary place. And we'll go through every range of emotions as you warm up, as you prepare, as you look towards a final. And I wonder whether this man, Josh Owen Tunde, envisaged himself on the podium, because he's in a position to do that at the moment. Third place behind two Americans, and that's another good throw. I'm not sure it will challenge his 22 meters and 24, but... Joshua Mantunde starting so low as well, kind of building up all that power. It hurts my knees to watch him sometimes. Tunde is really consistent right now at this like over 2150 going this season, but I feel like it's really hard to go from like you get that big PB. It's a it's a world championship final. Your first throw is a big PB. Sometimes it's hard to kind of bring that next throw in, and and I think. You, you may or may not see more big throws in, in the rest of the series, but it can go one of two ways for a second throw after a big PB. It's all about that tinkering and learning every throw. Can't see Owen Tunde going over for much coaching advice. We often see so many of our athletes doing that. So no improvement, 21 meters and 70 centimeters. It was a slight improvement for Brazil's Darlan Romani with his second round effort. Background to Tom Walsh seems to force his way onto every podium. Every time we see him, he's won four Diamond League championships. World Championship champion back in 2017. Third at two at the last two Olympics. Can Tom Walsh make it another medal for New Zealand? Not with that effort. Fifth place with 21 meters and 40. That's another one where I saw, you know, he was warming up a lot better than this. But like I said, he's also had many championships where he's gotten on that podium with a with one throw. Um, and that's all it takes. It only takes one. So as long as he can get himself in this top eight and give himself another uh, three throws after this um, third attempt, if it's not any better, you know, he'll be fine. He's a seasoned veteran. He certainly is. I love uh, reading about his wall shot created a shot. I'll let you explain it, Chase. The yeah. wall shot is much better explained by someone that uses one. Yeah, the Roman dolls of shot put, you know, it, it's a bunch of different weights. Uh, it's, it's an amazing tool if you travel a lot. So that you can take different sections out, chuck in different weights, and, and you guys are explaining... Not Roman, to Russian dolls. Russian dolls. <laughs> <laughs> But with those different weights that you guys train with different weight shots and if it wasn't for the wall shot you'd have to carry around a range of different shots but he's made a, uh, a tool that i mean that's what has kind of he's contributed so much to the sport for stop and so much a shot but we're let alone giving you guys that fantastic training at the moment philip mihailovic of croatia 21 meters and five centimeters then a foul Ooh, it's closer to the 22 meter mark another foul I wonder if he must have missed balance that would not have been an intentional foul there uh, I, I'm guessing so, seeing how far out of the ring he was. A lot of people right there have a problem. Um, when you come around, your first instinct is to see where your shot put landed. But I always tell everyone, I'm, I always say, they're going to mark it. You don't need to look. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind in my yeah. next um, shot put competition. 
<laughs> Philip Mihailovic, is it perhaps if he if he's confident he's going to be in that top eight, if he's going to get a further three throws, he's just trying to have fun, maybe taking the handbrake off, really hitting it hard. Yeah, if you're confident in that mark, sometimes it'll make it easier to just keep going and, and push the mark a little bit more. Nick Ponzio is right on that bubble of the top eight. He would love to get a further three throws in this competition. It would be really upsetting if he can't. The big Italian, oh, round about the same there. He's looking really frustrated, you know. I think he, he I, I know he knows what he's capable of. I'm sure he's seen himself do a lot of crazy things as I have training with him, but um, sometimes it's just hard in these in these big meets to 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 find yourself. Even no matter what you've done in training, it, it's hard to bring it here and do it. Isn't that frustration can build through the rounds as well, particularly if you know you're capable of something and you're struggling to s squeeze it out. Jack O'Gill, Thompson, and this man, and Nekwichi, they push themselves beyond Nick Ponzio's mark now. The Italian will not get a further three throws. And I don't think that's going to be a few more. That's going to be any more throws. Chuk Mbuka and Nekwichi of Nigeria. That might be the end of his world championships. So 21 meters and 15 in the first round. He needs 21 meters, 81, if he wants to unseat Nick Ponzio in that eighth position. Ryan Krauser pacing around. You can't get into the emotions of every thrower down there when you've got your own job to deal with. Nekwichi waiting for that mark, He's removing those wrist straps, 20 metres and 65. It will be an 11th place finish in this men's shot put final. Nekwichi, unless Isil Munoz has got anything to say about it, he's still got his third round effort to come. You never know anything could happen, I'm telling you. Josh Owen Tunde will be thinking anything can happen, sitting in that bronze medal position at the moment. Jack O'Gill will throw next for New Zealand. Season's best and personal best set in Auckland, New Zealand this year. July is then 21 metres and 58. Okay. The Japanese have such weird seasons, huh? Because they have winter and then they, their nationals are so early. It's very, it's very confusing. It really is. That's why I'm confused <laughs> to see a mark, unless yeah. the date's written the American way. And my notes would indicate that it's the 7th of July. And, and I was a bit shocked to see you know, a summer track and field competition in New Zealand. But perhaps something put on, especially for someone like Jack O'Gill, to yeah. help them prepare for this. Jack O'Gill on 20 metres and 75 centimetres. He's six centimetres behind Nick Ponzio. Can he squeeze himself out of ninth place into eighth? That throw looked a little better. I think he might have done it there. I know this feeling all too well. <laughs> Back and forth at every board to figure out what the mark is. It's the... Uh, track runners equivalent of the non-automatic and the time you're waiting there to see if anyone else can beat it adrian pippery looking on nervously as well ryan krauser big deep breaths he's next up in the circle for that measurement from Jack O'Gill is taking an age. Feels like hours when you're down there, trust me. Cheer you can hear in the background is the women's pole vault. 20 meters and 75, Jack O'Gill. Oh no, that was 82. We made it 21 meters and 82. He has unseated Italy's Nick Ponzio by one centimetre. 
in eighth place at the moment. Just Uzil Munoz that can affect those top eight now. But Ryan Krauser in gold medal position with his 22 meter, 71 centimeter second round effort. Eight centimeters ahead of Joe Kovacs. It's not as big a buffer as you'd like. Asking for some crowd support. Just brilliant when our athletes interact with the crowd. It's so tense, it's so nerve-wracking trying to perform at this level, but taking that moment to appreciate the crowd support, especially when you were born and raised in the state that you're competing in. It's good. Ryan Krauser, around about the same? Yeah, another big throw, I think a high 22s maybe. He seems like he's just a little off, he's not liking him. I think he thinks he's, he's got more in there. We saw, we also saw a close um, eighth and ninth push out in the women's shot, three centimeters, uh, Jess Woodard pushing out Maggie Ewan. So that's always brutal. And I want to see if Ryan furthered his gold medal position right here. No heartbreak there for Nick Ponzio of Italy, one of the stars of our sport. I hope he continues to on his pathways. 22.58, no improvement for Ryan Krauser. My closing thought on uh, Nick Ponzo, we can see him there in the background. Fuel to the fire for Munich and those European Championships coming up in a few weeks' time. I'd love to fight it out with these big men here on the world stage, but he has got that slight consolation prize at the European Championships coming up in Munich. Yeah, the Europeans are lucky they get the uh, couple extra um, meets to go out there and compete on the world stage. It is quite the year for some of our athletes, multiple championships. This the first one. It's almost been respectful from the other major championship organizers. And they've let the um, World Championships go first, Commonwealth Games adjusting their schedule ever so slightly to give the athletes a bit of extra recovery. And then those European Championships towards the middle of August. We're just reviewing one of the marks before we continue the competition. Ryan Krauser patiently waiting for his turn to throw. So the last throw we had up on our screen was Ryan Krauser at 22 metres and 58. So whether they're reviewing that or one of the other marks, I'm not sure. Great action going down on the track at the moment. If you've got a split screen, if you love your field events. So they're just querying whether Ryan Krause's throw was fully in the sector. Can you see, no, that's fine. I've been told they're querying where the ball landed, so maybe a couple of bounces there. They're trying to decide quite which one to measure. So frustrating at the indoor competition um, in New York when they awarded him a... I was watching online at home and they said a world record and I was looking at the body language of Ryan Krause. I was like, well, I'm pretty, fairly sure if he threw a world record, he'd be jumping around a, at least a tiny bit. Yeah, and some people with two and three metre PBs, everyone's getting very confused at that meet. That was I know the... Uh, the cruel aspect. Yeah. It was one of the collegiate athletes being awarded a huge personal yeah. best. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. he looks so shocked. And then next up, Ryan Krauser threw apparently exactly the same distance with, with no kind of, And I was like, nah, something's up here. <laughs> I think the dirt out here might be a little soft. Sometimes it just it, it billows a bit much and might be confusing for the lasers. You can't necessarily find, yeah, the key point to measure. So Munoz of Mexico is the last man that can penetrate that top eight. So they're fine with Krauser, so they decided it was all right. They were just double checking, so it will be 22 meters and 58. Ryan Krauser stays in that gold medal position from his second round. Munoz. Just short of the 22 meter mark there. That might be an improvement for the Mexican. A look that shot just landing in the shady side of the sector 
this camera angle might help us a little bit. Oh, bang on the 20-meter mark there, I think. Yeah, he just seems, he seems a little off. I have not seen a back brace that tight in a long time in the shot, but I can tell you. <laughs> well, I mean, that says it all. He's taking the tape off his hands. And that is the end of the competition for the Mexican record holder. 19 meters and 79. Seems like there he was saying the ball kept coming up, um, off his hand, so he's going over it and the, and the ball kind of falls out, which it happens a lot and it's really frustrating because all the technical pieces might be there, but if it comes out of your hand, you're you're done for. Unfortunately, I don't speak shot put hand <laughs> sign language, but Tracy Lee, our women's world champion, does. She's here to translate for me. Adrian Pippery next in the circle. He looks really consistent. He seems frustrated, though. Oh, foul throw there for Pippery. What a shame. Is that an intentional foul? Must be. Must be. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> almost the uh, almost the etiquette. It kind of saves a bit of time and effort for the officials. Yeah. Just like, don't bother, pal. It's not going to improve my yeah. day. Sometimes you also just don't want to mark on your on your record. There you go. I know it was bad. Yeah. I don't need to see it. I'm just saying, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Right, Marcus Thompson. We do have one more man that could push himself up into eighth place. 20 metres and 82 for Jack Gill at the moment. Marcus Thompson, 20 metres and 89 outdoor this, this season. If he could hit that, mm. uh, he would go back into the top eight, but I'm not sure. It just only looks a tiny bit over the 20 metre mark. The Norwegian looks like you might agree with me. His competition will just be three throws here in Eugene. I think he's losing his finish a little bit. That left coming off, I can tell he feels it. Probably going to see some more shot put sign language of that to hit um, <laughs> to his coach, maybe. What's that one? Hard luck, pal. <laughs> let's, let's sit here and watch the action unfold. This is that. Are you going to stay or are you going to go? <laughs> <laughs> Thompson in this early evening sunshine having to settle for 10th place. No improvement there the, in that third round. Can, uh, unwind, relax, and enjoy the action. Defending champion Joe Kovacs into the circle. As world champion, you get a bye into this world championships. We have seen Joe Kovacs complete a full outdoor season. Some of our defending champions have competed kind of sparingly got themselves ready for this but Joe Kovacs all business coached by his wife Ashley Kovacs they are lovely special dynamic I'm not sure uh, I could have been coached by my husband I think we'd still be married <laughs> <laughs> yeah him and if he hadn't had the title buy Ryan would have had the Diamond League buy and two buys that they didn't need for sure always always one and two at USA's was a full USA's Ryan Krauser, Joe Kovacs, Josh Owen Tunde, your one, two, three from USA's, and currently your one, two, three here in the World Championship final. What a story that would be for the USA team. Backing up that one, two, three in the men's hundred. Fred Curley, Marvin Bracey, Trayvon Bromel getting the job done there. Trayvon Bromel for me, kind of breaking his own championship curse so often. You know, not matching his full potential on the world stage, picking up that fantastic bronze medal. But Ryan Krauser, in a way similar, not taking this title as a world record holder, not to have a world championship title indoors or out, is baffling, mind-boggling. And he's uh, in the driving seat at the moment with his second round effort. But what can Joe Kovacs do? He loves to spoil the rising Ryan Krauser party. <sighs> Another throw in excess of 22 meters. He looks frustrated watching him warm up. I, I know he has a big throw in there. He knows it, and I, I can just tell he's just getting frustrated because he's just missing it. But if he can just, he's going to keep going to Ashley, keep trying to get the right tips, and we'll see if we can see what we saw in the warm-ups in qualifying and today. As a competitor, how much attention would you pay to someone else's warm-up? 
You try not to, but it's pretty it's pretty hard. You're always side eyeing the ring as other people are in there for sure. <laughs> holding your nerve but you know it's like Ryan Krauser if he's seen one of those big throws he's got to be scared he's got to be trying to do everything he can no improvement for Joe Kovacs 22-17 there's a shot of him and his wife Ashley what a partnership he did say he would have considered retiring if it wasn't for Ashley's encouragement and what a treat for us thank you very much Ashley Kovacs because we love to see Joe Kovacs come back time and time again what can the Brazilian Darlin Romani manage? Almost looks possessed with those eyes. Sets himself up pretty quickly once he gets down into the throwing position. <laughs> right on 22 metres again. I don't think that will improve his 21.90. And it is a foul. Perhaps one of those intentional fouls Chase was explaining to us. I'd like to see what he thinks about the foul. Seems like he's kind of looking at it I don't know yeah it seems also he's a little high out of the back oh yeah oh. it was way out okay they changed the camera view to, to show the distance and I think it's a little deceptive we think it's we think it's clean till the end sure all right Josh Owen today what more have you got in the tank no nope, nothing more in this round Josh Owen today can't add to his 21 meters and 24 centimeters. I can tell you, throwing big in the first couple rounds, I think he's definitely, I think he's definitely just trying to find himself again. Um, I know the feeling; it's kind of hard. Good throw out there in the beginning. You see yourself in metal contention. Now he's just kind of stay, stay up there in case he has to answer back to anybody. And that's the emotions you're trying to balance up. You've got the opportunity kind of strain for something harder, but also you want to take a moment to enjoy it. You're here at home World Championships. You're in the bronze medal position. Just think if Josh Owen Tunde can, can stay loose, but stay focused. Okay, throw a little bit further than that 22 meters and 24. So when you've got the likes of Tom Walsh in your competition and he's behind you, He's a 1,500-meter runner's analogy. That's like having the likes of Jakob Ingebrigtsen sat on your shoulder just waiting to see what he's going to do. Jakob Ingebrigtsen about to take to the field of play in the second men's 1,500-meter height. Uh, heat, no improvement there for, jo uh, for Tom Walsh. He's going to start getting more and more frustrated. Yeah, I think he knows what he's capable of. As I said, he's one of those one and done throwers so you can never count him out but he's definitely seeming just a little off seems a little flat get a bit more height in that shot that tom walsh i loved watching dame valerie adams as well with all her performances her and tom walsh got to be inspiring an awful lot of young athletes in new zealand yeah, I mean, they also have another girl coming up who made the final and uh, uh, made our final, which I, uh, I didn't think I'd see another New Zealand girl up there for a while until Maddie came along. So a lot of Kiwi shot putters. You wouldn't think of it. That's brilliant. All right, so the slight pause in the action here is for the reshuffling of the order. We've had the full three rounds. The top eight will get another three throws reorder to throw from eighth through to first if there is any change in the order they'll reshuffle again in the sixth round Maybe jacko gill of new zealand throwing first in the fourth round of this final you can see the men just taking a moment to stretch themselves out what a scorecard for usa four in this top eight four in the men's hundred meters and took half of that final and they're doing the same here in the men's shot put, led by Ryan Krauser. He's having a chat with someone. Joe Kovacs looks all business to me. Not much interaction with Joe Kovacs with, with anyone. <laughs> they have great camaraderie on the circuit and, and away, but for me, Joe, Josh, Joe Kovacs, he looks, he looks pretty focused. Ryan Krauser as well. There's, there's not quite that sense of fun and play that we see from these men so often. Yeah, Joe defending his title, Ryan trying to get his first one. As you said, the world record holder not having a world title, it's 
it just gets so, you just, it's unfathomable. And I think both of them are like meaning straight business, but afterwards you can bet they're eating dinner together and having a couple beers, don't worry about that. But definitely business right now. Certainly it's interesting to see that change. Intense focus, intense focus. And I wonder how that feels for some of our younger athletes trying to mix it with these superstars. Jack O'Gill of New Zealand, new personal best at the start of this month, 21.58, just 20 metres and 82 centimetres at the moment. Good, fast finish. Just not giving an awful lot away there. Perhaps a bit frustrated he's not building the series he feels he's capable of here. He is improving with every round. 19 meters 19, 20 meters 75, 20 meters 82. He seems on the ball okay. I'm just, I'm just wondering where he's using so much force. Jack O'Gill patiently waiting for his third round measurement. Does push him above Adrian Pipri there, 21 and 3 centimetres. That's a bit better for Jack O'Gill, but he still looked like he knows he's got that 21 58 in his locker. Love to recreate that here in the World Championships. So Adrian Pipri entered this fourth round in seventh place, so he will throw seven, second. Just been pushed down to eighth place though. Improvement on the 20 meters and 93. His second round hits the white flag. He looks disappointed. I mean, we all know what he's capable of. Like I said, ever since his ankle, I feel like he's just coming back. But it seems like he's been making a good trajectory up. It's just, oh, I love watching him yell and hoot and holler in the ring for sure. <laughs> so, so much emotion from these guys down there. 20 meter 79. I mean, it's a consistent series. You know that uh, he can throw 21.58, 21.74 indoors. He's got a lot more in the locker. Absolutely. Need two more rounds to try and find it. Philip Mihailovic up next. He does have a world medal from the World Indoor Championships in my hometown of Birmingham. 2018. Could be a bit of improvement there. 21 meters and five centimeters. It looked like it was a little bit closer to the 22 meter line. I think that might be a better throw. I mean, watching his glide, like ever since he transitioned, everyone talks about it. He's pretty slow and methodical, almost like Ryan, just a bit different um, from middle to finish. Um, but I feel like he could definitely be a, a, a pretty dangerous rotator if he just gets all the right tweaks. I love learning the difference between that glide and that rotate. You and your training partner, Sophie McKinnon, are very kind to break it down for me, explain it a few months ago. So Mihailovic, was he a, a glider that's transformed himself into a rotator? Yeah. You can um, kind of see that, but it's, it's a bit... Not clunky's a bit harsh, yeah. but it's almost, like you said, like methodical, kind of like, it's this, then that, then that, yeah. versus some of these guys that have been doing it for years, that it looks a little bit more natural, a little bit quicker. Like that. <laughs> He's going to walk out on that. Not only has Tom Walsh made the wall shot. Oh, you can see he's just caught that with his toe there. The problem with speed sometimes is if you just drop your chest a little, you're going to hit the toe board. So he has to be in so much control that he's up and his hips are up because if he's the speed he's moving, if he's downwards, he's hitting that toe board just like that. You would have certainly felt that. This man is dangerous. Darlin Romani, he's got all the tools to get himself in the top three to spoil the American party that's going on at the moment. as quick in the circle as some of the other competitors right on that 22 meter mark so he might improve his 21 and 90 but it's 22 and 24 centimeters for the bronze medal at the moment with Josh Owen as we move towards these final three competitors in the fourth round of the men's shot put. 
I thought I saw a hamstring wrap. It's, I'm pretty sure it's just spandex. Made me nervous for a second, but I just feel like he's coming up a little high out of the back, and I'm wondering if he's still maybe babying something. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you've got such a technical event if you happen to carry any niggles, as we call them in Britain. Mm -hmm. Niggle. Yep. <laughs> I love hearing it when I'm out there, I swear. 2192 incremental improvement for Darlin Romani and that brings us to the current top three here in this men's shot put final and look at that one two three USA Josh Owen Tunde that wide squat so low building that power converting it <sighs> See, uh, foul throw as well so not quite finding his groove after that massive first round throw yeah like you say I I see him get down there. It hurts my knees, but it really is hard. I'm telling you. <laughs> Yesterday I did it, and you get in there and you try and find your zone, but sometimes it's hard when you just hit the big one up front. I think I saw a, qu a quote off Ryan Krauser saying he does his biggest throws when he thinks the least, and that's that's such a hard thing to do. Anyone that's suddenly maybe tried meditation <laughs> right. or high-level sport. Uh, yeah, staying out of your own head or getting in your own head just enough is such a challenge. These men are so familiar with that. Joe Kovacs, your current silver medalist. Could be another over 22-meter throw, but not the massive throw. We need the defending world champion to find if he's going to spoil the Ryan Krauser party, as he'll be so desperate to do. Both their series are just coming together so well. And I can tell right there on the finish, he's just, he's just missing it. But I think we all know never to count Joe out after the Doha final throw. Just what I was gonna say, I was reliving it when I was doing some research uh, this morning. So for those of you that can't remember or don't know, you should go back and watch it. He won the world title back in Doha, stole, and I will say he stole the gold medal from this man, Ryan Krauser. Ryan Krauser had the same mark as New Zealand's Tom Walsh. He was in the gold medal position on countback. He had to watch Joe Kovacs push himself from fourth place to first place and take that medal in Doha by one centimetre. And Ryan Krauser, he's got to have some sleepless nights thinking about that. He's still looking a bit slow and methodical. I think he's telling himself right there he's, he's dropping a little bit out of the back, which he isn't wanting right there. I don't think he's liking where his hip angle is. But he just doesn't seem like he's hitting as hard as I know he can. He's been training a lot, so I'm wondering if he's, he's trying to work something out. And he was saying he could probably only be in that tip-top shape for, for a couple of weeks in the year. You've got to find that balance between training and freshening up. And 22 meters and 16 for Ryan Krauser. No improvement on his 22 meters and 71. And that moves us into the fifth round in this final. Jacko Gill came into this final in eighth place. He's pushed himself one spot up into seventh. Can he find anything more? He took seventh place in Doha. Gill just taking a moment to compose himself. Starting position in the circle, so deliberate. We're going to practice this over and over again. Didn't look as quick as Jacko Gill's looked in some of his opening rounds. He's looking really consistent. It's come up as a foul on my computer. Let's see if it's. Oh. Oh, oh, the athleticism right there. <laughs> that is shot put, let me tell you. <laughs> so he's doing the worm. That was so close. Jack McGill just asking for an explanation. For the lay person, Chase, if it does fall to the side there, is that is that a foul? Yeah, I'm not. He must be asking about something else because maybe about the reorder, I assume, because I feel like he obviously you know it's a foul. You know, you write that query might be there might be a reshuffle yeah. now as we move into the sixth round. switched with uh, trip. Yeah. Because Adrian Pipley is in eighth place at the moment, entered this fourth round in seventh place. Twenty meters and ninety-three, his best throw. He 
has so much power and speed in the finish. I'm just, I, I, I don't think his legs are working with him. I can, when that's what I'm reading. I can, I can just see the frustration. His left's coming down a little late, but his upper body is, it, it looks amazing. And you spoke, like I say, when you kindly let me come and watch you train, <laughs> about the men, that their footwork is, is sublime. And that's something as a female athlete you do try and emulate, but, but sometimes they can almost just muscle it out up top. They don't need to be as finely tuned maybe as the female athletes, but almost the opposite way around. Adrian Pippery that. Right on the 22 meter mark for Philip Mihailovic. That could be quite some improvement. He's only on 21 meters and 34 centimeters at the moment. That's that slow, very methodical rotation with that glide finish will do it right for you. A tall Croatian. We've got Sandra Perkovic coming in the women's discus. Oh, Mihailovic like that, punching the air. Philip Mihailovic, that's a nice little improvement there, adding half a metre nearly up into fifth place. And Tom Walsh at the moment having to settle for sixth. That is not where we would normally see the Kiwi. Tom Walsh looked fast in the circle there. That's on the 22 metre mark. He's on 21 and 49 at the minute. What's that? What's the sign language there? I think um, he might be talking to uh, Philip right there. There they had their <laughs> moment telling him, no, no, no. <laughs> You're not going to do that to me, not today. It's like the uh, Noah Lyles to Erin Knighton <laughs> finger wag we saw at the USA. Is Tom Walsh saying, no, 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 Philip. Yeah. I've got your number. I've been here before. So Tom Walsh. Pushed down into sixth place by Philip Mahidovic's 21 and 92. I haven't got a measurement yet for Tom Walsh. 22 meters and eight centimeters for Tom Walsh up into fourth position. All right, so Josh, Joshua Wintunde outperforming himself. Tom Walsh up into fourth place. Dylan Romani. Surprise story of those World Indoor Championships in Belgrade. That won't trouble things there. Chase was saying she's seen some heavy strapping from Dylan Romani. Oh, I think you could be right there. Oh, flesh colored strapping there on his right leg. No, I, I kept going back and forth whether it was spandex or, or maybe a hamstring thing, but I've, I've seen him a bit taped up like all season and, and um, since indoors. But 21 um, 92, not bad, strapped up. Sometimes you might want to ride the adrenaline. Always worth a shot, hey. Mm -hmm. You've got to come here. You've got to see if you can deliver on the day, especially when you're world indoor champion. Josh Owen Tunde having the competition of his life. And that's great. Over 22 meters again. He set a new personal best in the opening round of 22 meters and 24. But look at that composure there. He knows that's a good throw, but he's already got excited about his 22 24, and it's taken him three rounds almost to recover from that. Yeah, I think he I think he changed his reaction. He saw the big throw and he said, That's what I'm made of. I don't need to hoot and holler to you uh, to show you that that's what I can do. It was an amazing throw. Possibly another PB, let's see. Joshua Rotunde came into this competition rank ninth, and he's in third place at the moment, and that's a nice little improvement there. 22-29, getting his series back on track, giving himself some much-needed centimetres ahead of the likes of Tom Walsh. So this is the fifth round of the men's shot put competition. Joe Kovacs has got two throws left to try and get himself back into that gold medal position to defend the title he took in Doha. That's the red bib you've got there. Joe Kovacs knows how to bring the heat. Oh, and that, that Chase Ely is big. That's what you saw in his warm-up. And that's the emotion we've been waiting for from Joe Kovacs. Woo. I told you, never count him out. It's those last rounds. Brian's a competitor, but I know he saw that and I know he feels that. Oof. You're right, poker face there. From I would not like to play poker with either of these men because they've been giving nothing away. Joe Kovacs has been stoic until then. 
Many let the motion come out, and that is why 22 meters, 89 centimeters. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new leader in the men's shot put final, and it is the defending champion, Joe Kovacs. A bit of a swagger. He's got to calm himself down. Is that what Ashley Kovacs, his wife and coach, is going to be saying? All right, pal, come on, come on, hold she, it together. She will be, you think, poker face with those two? She will have the biggest poker face. She's not going to hype him up, nothing. She's going to keep him grounded right here. Yeah, she'll because think, she'll think, honey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she'll be like, yeah, whatever. Because you know Ryan can compete, and, and, and she's not going to let him think it's job done until it's job done. It's almost like poking the bear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a red flag to a bull. Hey, Ryan Krauser. Just throwing 22.89. So Krauser putting his t shirt on there. He should be throwing next. No indication to me that he's passed or anything. I think they might be holding him for in the intros here. We're just seeing the men high hurdlers getting introduced for their final. And if you're an American athlete, that could be quite a moment to get inspired by. Yeah, seeing Devin and Grant, I think we're about to hear some some loud roars right now for the for the uh, Oregon graduate. Here it is. Here we go. <laughs> Joe Kovacs. Oh, we really like that. We saw a similar response in his first round, but I don't know it wasn't. There's the extra bit, the double fist bump. Yeah, I've definitely been um, feeling my inner Kovacs uh, with my cheers lately. The double fist down, uh, uh, pumped scream. That I knew that sign language. She just went, he's either going on number one or I've got one more. Either way. It's not done till it's done, let me tell you. You're yeah. shaking until it's in your hand. These men know the twists, the shows they've put on over the last few years for our fans. And could we see one more twist? I love men's shot put. Ryan Krauser patiently waiting for the men's high hurdles final. Again, it's all that emotion. You've got to balance it. You've got one of the biggest moments of your career. This man is no stranger to big moments. So it's Kovacs. Brilliant. 22 meters and 89. Again, look at that shot soaring through this Hayward field arena shot put sector down there has seen some amazing marks over the years world record set here on the 18th of june 2021 ryan krauser's world record so not only does ryan krauser know he is perfectly capable of throwing further he knows he's capable of doing it here in eugene might have heard the double gun fire in the background. Full start in the men's high hurdles. Opens the door here for Ryan Krauser to have his fifth round effort. This is the closing throw of this fifth round. After this, there are just eight throws left. Each of these men have one shot at glory, pun not intended. And Ryan Krauser steps in to take his fifth round attempt. He's just seen his compatriot, long-time competitor, Joe Kovacs turn the tables on him. 16 centimeters, the winning margin at the moment for Joe Kovacs. And wow, what a response from Ryan Krauser. Ooh, that is a champion's response. The boring native, not so boring. Oh, again, Joe Kovacs having to pull out the poker face. He said it one more, he did it right there. I saw that, Ryan. And what? It's not come up on our system yet. 22 metres, 89. The lead at the moment with Joe Kovacs. But Ryan Krauser unleashing a massive throw here in the fifth round. What's it going to be? 22 metres, 94. Ryan Krauser goes into the gold medal position in the fifth round. It's a championship record. He breaks Joe Kovacs' championship record by three centimetres. These men taking chunks out of each other centimetre by centimetre. Chase, this couldn't be any different. 
different from your final. You threw that massive first round effort, and I'm sure you didn't sit back and relax, but no one could challenge you, and it has been the opposite in this men's final. The men are entertainers, let me tell you. Sure, Adrian Pippery, one last chance for a decent throw here in the final. I think he's gonna step out on that one. He has stepped out, so it is eighth place for Adrian Pippery here at the home final. And now can he watch his American teammates try and hold on to the one, two, three position they're in the moment. A shoulder slap there from Ryan Krauser, that's saying, see you next time, bud. He should be proud of himself, you know, he got here um, in fourth in the U.S. And, and you know, he really went for, for it in trials and, and um, I think he should be proud of himself. Top eight. Just uh, if anyone's glued to this competition and unable to have a split screen of any type, it is a full start for Devon Allen. He's, uh, he's challenging. It's going to take a while down there. So some of the unrest and some of the crowd noise you will hear in the background is due to that drama unfolding. Devon Allen, the world lead, close to the world record this year. Has some drama of his own going down just in the left-hand corner. Jacko Gill, hopefully oblivious to it. He's done well in this final three rounds. He's pushed himself up into seventh place, equaling his finish in Doha. Has he got anything more in the tank? Philip Mihailovic. He's got quite a gap on him at the moment. Sixth place is 21.82, so 80 centimetres the gap between Jacko Gill of New Zealand and Philip Mihailovic of Croatia. That's going to be better, but I, I don't think it's going to close the gap. But I think he's definitely going to go over 21 again right there. Yep, 21.40. Nice 21.40 there for Jacko Gill. High fives all round. Time to settle down and watch the multitude of spectacles that are going on here at Hayward Field. Filip Mihailovic has got one last chance to have a go at this. 21 metres and 94 is his best. He'd have to throw further than he's ever thrown to get involved in the medals. And he might have done that just there. Close to 22 metres. It won't challenge the medals, but it could improve his 21 and 82. It's an amazing series. I'm sure he's really happy with it. Not far off his PB. Um, a season's best, uh, I'm sure he's pretty happy. Ladies and gentlemen, an American using the term PB, not PR. Thank you very much, Chase. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to come on for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you got to meet us halfway, right? <laughs> I called it track and field. Uh, <laughs> Philip Mihailovic is waiting on his final round distance there. We will see him again at the European Championships. No improvement, 21-82 in the fifth round. Croatia's next demonstration will be, will be from Sandra Perkovic. She takes on Valerie Ullman. That women's discus throw coming up later. Ryan Krause, who he's been in this position before. He's had one hand on a gold medal to, and had to watch Joe Kovacs steal that gold medal. Nice calm fist pump from those two. <laughs> he glances over. Does he have a moment to soak that up? It's a one-two for the USA in the sprint hurdles. Grant Holloway, Trey Cunningham getting the business done over there. But are they aware we've got potentially a second American clean sweep on the cards over in the men's shot put? Darlin Romani, what can the Brazilian do? 21.92 is best mark at the moment. 22.29, the bronze medal mark of Josh Owen Tunde. Nice throw. Um, oh, I'm seeing a red flag. Oh, he doesn't oh. seem to disagree with the flag. Mm, just that heel there. Yeah, just on the edge over the left side. Sometimes you can feel it and sometimes you can't. Bunny hop of frustration there from Darlin Romani. And it's yet another top five finish for the Brazilian. The man who can take the sweep. New Zealand's Tom Walsh have one of the last laughs. Can he spoil a one, two, three for USA in this men's shot put? He's got the skills, he's got the talent, but no, short of 22 meters, fourth place for New Zealand's Tom Walsh. I severely hope this isn't the last we see of Tom Walsh in a global championships. I think he's around for a bit. Yeah, I oh, think good, he's good, around. Good, good, good. I'd be nervous. surprised how not old he is. Oh, good, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> 
look forward to trying to buy one of his wall shot t-shirts. It's the one that says... Uh, Running is overrated. Running is overrated. That? That's the one I want. <laughs> Running is overrated. All the Bean Big ain't easy. Yeah. Uh, but they might all be sold out, those so ones. <laughs> I think the extra small will be, will be good. Can they make Bean Big ain't easy? That's the irony. <laughs> but Thomas Walsh, what a man, what a competitor. But he's had to make way for the Americans today. Josh Owen Day with a competition of his life. Bronze medal position at the moment. He's throwing a huge PB. He need another 60 centimeters to get the silver medal. That's another 22 plus meter throw from Owen Tunde. And he shows the emotion there. 22-24 in the opening round. Took him all the way to the fifth to find anything more. But Chase, this man has massively outperformed his ranking coming into this competition. Came in ranked ninth. Leaving with a bronze at least. We're just waiting for this final measurement. I don't think he will have found 60 centimeters. But it's definitely another throw over 22, which, which says I got a bronze medal and I earned it. I got three throws over 22, three PBs. Like, he's definitely going to be on top of him. And should be really proud of himself to be why he made this team. Absolutely. 22 22 coming into this competition. Josh Owen Tunde had a personal best of 22 meters dead, and he's exceeded that so much. But we are down to the final two throws in this men's shot put final. Joe Kovacs with that massive 22 89 in the fifth round. He must have thought, This is my moment, this is my time. He's guaranteed a silver medal. But could Joe Kovacs be about to have the last laugh again in a major championship final? Will Ryan Krauser finally break his World Championship curse? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a penultimate throw in the men's shot put competition. Reigning champion, has he got anything left? Oh, it's over 22 metres. He taps his head. He's been given the white flag, so it is a valid throw, but there's not the arms aloft that you'd expect if that was going to be a championship winning throw. I don't think that's going to be the 22-94. He needs to take the gold medal. I think Ryan might be taking a pretty uh, happy throw right here. He's still going to have the poker face on. You better believe it. But <laughs> I'm not. I'm pretty sure that that did not surpass his 22.94. It did 22.42 from Joe. 22. Yeah. So Joe Kovacs will leave with another medal, but it will be silver confirmed for Joe Kovacs. Look at that one, two, three for USA. And Ryan Krauser, the home favorite, has done it. We have waited so many years to see this man take a world championship medal. He's asked the crowd for support. He is finally going to leave with this title. But what can he do for this crowd? He has them in the palm of his hand right now. What an entertainer. We see this in soccer, we see this in American football, but what a treat to see it in track and field. Ryan Krauser, the whole stadium watching his final throw. It's going to be another over 22 meter throw, but it won't be any improvement on his huge 22 and 94 championship record in the fifth round. And Ryan Krauser, he grew up two and a half hour drive down the coast of Oregon here in Boring. And He's done so many competitions here, and this will mean so much to this man. Chase Ely, you took this gold medal in the women's competition last night. So you are best placed to tell me what is going through the mind of Ryan Krauser right now. Honestly, it's so many emotions. People keep people always ask you, how do you feel? Put it into words, and I'm telling you, you just can't. Especially here for him. I felt like I was doing it for the home crowd because it's the US. I can't imagine doing it in my home state. Ryan Krauser completing the kind of locker. He's got the world indoor record, the world outdoor record, the Olympic title, and now the world title. He's only the second man ever to manage to get the world and Olympic titles. Compatriot Adam Nielsen was the only other man that's done that, 2004, 2005. So Ryan Krauser managing it there, sharing a warm embrace. Olympic record and world championship record too. Yeah. Goodness, could he? Have, is there anything else? Is there anything else? <laughs> There's a world indoor title. There it Darlin is. Darlene Romani spoiled left. that. Diamond League title. Oh yeah. Tom Walsh keeps nicking those. I think he got it last year, but I think he needs the 
Not sure if he has the Diamond League record. I, I think oh, that's just goal. a note for Joe Kovacs. That's heartbreaking there. That fifth round effort, you thought, wow, he's done it. He's done it again. It is five medals in a row for Joe Kovacs, and that's super special to be part of a clean sweep for America on American soil is special. You can see Sandy Morris and Katie Majette in the background there. Flags on their shoulders. A pair of medals for them. But what a moment for Josh Owen Tunde as well. Yeah, um, I, 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 I love Tunde. He's one of the like nicest guys you'll ever meet. I'm really proud of him. I think he's going to be really proud of himself. And they're definitely going to come home to claps in the hotel tonight. Could this be your second sleepless night, J.C. Lee? <laughs> Definitely. You know, um, I, I was talking to everybody yesterday. Um, first gold for the U.S. Of, uh, of the championships, but I'm seeing a lot of American flags out there today, and I'm, I'm really proud of that. Well, U.S. as a nation, top the medal table every edition of these championships since 1983. And it seems only fitting that this championship has finally made it w its way over to America. And even more special that it's here in Eugene, Track Town, USA. And these male shot putters have certainly risen to the occasion here. That was so entertaining. It was so dramatic. And I'm almost gutted I've got to wait for Budapest next year to see these, these men go head to head again because they truly are something special. They're a credit to our sport and a credit to this discipline. It feels amazing to see three American flags out there in the men's shot put, you know. It's just amazing. Look at this. These boys, they, they went out there. It's far throws. It's not just an easy final. It's one of the hardest events right now. And I'm just really proud of them. Apparently the crowd is as well. <laughs> Some great noise there from the crowd. This instant medal ceremony. Giving the press kind of that captured moment there. So often you've got the flags up and then you've got a, right, a footnote underneath. I think this is what it was. Ryan Krauser first, Joe Kovac second, Josh Owen Tunde third. But not this year. Then they've got these special medals hung around their neck. They'll hand them back in and they'll get engraved. Chase Ely very kindly bringing her medal up. Yeah. Got to have a nice look at that. That gold medal's pretty special. They'll get their competition result engraved on the background. Yeah, very special for these men. I found out I've been holding it backwards from my pictures, so that's something I learned today. <laughs> well, you've been showing your name off instead yeah. of showing... Oh, Chase, come on. I thought that. I just, just zoom in so they know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Everyone knows who you are, Chase. I've seen lots of people asking for photos. I'm sure it's going to be exactly the same for Ryan Krauser. We can't underestimate the pressure this man was under to take this title. This is about to be a very loud stadium. <laughs> it is turning into a super loud stadium. Moving towards the end of the afternoon session here on day three in Eugene, Oregon. The heavy throws have been super entertaining so far. And the mascot Bigfoot just having his moment as well. But I'd like to take a moment to say thank you very much to Chase Ely for lending us your technical expertise, your heavy throw sign language knowledge. Um, it's really, truly brilliant to have someone that knows what they're on about um, and a reigning world champion uh, alongside me for this men's shot put, watching another American take that title. Chase, what's next for you? Um, you know, just a couple more Diamond Leagues, a Diamond League final, uh, try to finish the season um, and on a high note, even though I, 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 I got to try and keep going after such a big uh, win. Um, but, you know, it was amazing to be up here and, and commentate with you and have what feels like the best seat in the house to watch these balls go far. And what do you think a home world championships here on U.S. soil can do for your sport? You know, I feel like having hosted a championships here, maybe get uh, more Americans interested the way the Tracktown USA people are interested in athletics. Well, I hope it does. You certainly inspired me, and I'm sure many of our viewers at home, and Ryan Krauser will have done the same. <laughs> Ryan Krauser taking a moment to soap up the action, as will Josh Owen Tunde. They are staring over at the women's 100 metres. Sure, any track fans down there, anyone that's not related to Ryan Krauser has probably turned their attention to that. 
Joe Kovacs, all smiles out. And he's unnerved by the poker faces we saw from these guys. Throughout the competition, you usually see them smiling and laughing and, and high-fiving. And it was all business down there today, and they certainly got the business done. Sharing a quiet word. Another look at how he did it. Ryan Krauser, the master world indoor and outdoor record holder, waited all the way until the fifth round to find his best. Chase Ely giving us that insight that he was, he was starting with a static start and he moved in to a more fluid motion and that yielded a throw of 22 metres and 94 and a championship record. Taking that title from his teammate Joe Kovacs and his championship record. So had a tough day, I'm sure, in the Kovacs household. They'll be very proud, proud of yet another medal. But it was gold for Oregon native Ryan Krauser. Could not be a more popular victory here at Haywood Field, Eugene. Fist pumps, selfies, everything. Ryan Krauser making his way on his lap of honour. Look at that. Three flags parading themselves around. We saw a clean sweep in the men's 100. We thought we might see it in the high hurdles. And it wasn't to be just a one, just, I say inverted commas, a one-two for the US in that event. But one, two, three here with Ryan Krauser, Joe Kovacs and Josh Owen-Tunde. Just wonderful to see these scenes when you're someone that's grown up competing in Oregon. I'm sure Ryan Krauser can't go more than five meters without bumping into someone he knows. Nice photo there, Ashley Kovacs, coach and wife of Joe Kovacs. This is a tight knit throwing community. Great sportsmanship there from Ashley Kovacs and Ryan Krauser acknowledging each other. Five consecutive world medals for Joe Kovacs. That's special. I'd love to pick up another title. But these two men, Ryan Krauser and Joe Kovacs, makes it 33 wins for Ryan Krauser. Out of two for Joe Kovacs. There's only two victories for Joe Kovacs over Ryan Krauser coming up World Championships. He couldn't make it a third here today. But look at those kids. They have going to have loved watching these men compete down there. To see whole families out here in Eugene, Oregon, watching, it, watching this action. Could there be a young child out there inspired by what they've seen produce the next generation of track and field stars? The US already such a powerhouse. Do we really need them to <laughs> them to get any more inspired? Maybe not. Got to give the rest of the world a chance. They certainly didn't get a look in here in this men's shot put final. up that full final there for you championship record gold medal to usa ryan krauser silver medal to usa joe kovacs the defending champion having to settle for second place and young up-and-coming athlete josh awuntunde sneaking the bronze medal in a brand new personal best tom walsh of new zealand so often on the podium having to give way to josh awuntunde Brilliant, clean sweep for the host nation. Fantastic atmosphere here at Hayward Field. You 
Fiji native, so knowledgeable, so enthusiastic. It's been a real treat for fans and athletes alike. It's hard to believe we're just three days into 10 days of action here. I feel like we've had so much to cheer about, so much to talk about so far. But I'm so delighted that the headlines will read that Ryan Krauser, the double Olympic champion, has finally broken his world championship curse. He takes the gold medal in a new championship record, the Eugene native, victorious. Thank you.